Hello, my beautiful son of our moths, or any kind of moth you want to be. Welcome to this week's episode. I am so, so, so excited. So if you listen to the Writer's Triangle regularly, you know that we interviewed our writer in residence for the e-zine, and you know our surprise, we've been telling everyone that it is launching in January of 2022, when in fact it is launching tomorrow. I am so excited. I can't believe we did it. It was so beyond stressful. I was sweating it. I was sweating it, y'all. You don't even hear me, though. So much went into making this happen, and I got to give it to Outcast Press again. There was so helpful and super supportive throughout the launching process. And it was so nice to have someone to talk to about it. Because as you all know, if you follow us on Twitter, I really, really can't keep a secret. I just like if something exciting is happening, I want to talk about it. I want to blab. I want to be like, yay, this thing is happening. (laughs) And it's because I'm excited. It's, you know, we launched, but you have to One of the things I've learned in publication and this process of launching a podcast and launching an e-zine and launching the press and launching books is that you have to give everybody room to breathe, right? So I always wanted to do an e-zine and I want to give a little bit of a backstory about it. I've been wanting to do an e-zine for like 10 years. But Chad would never sign off on it. He was like, I think it's a bad idea. I think it's a bad idea. But the easings that I wanted were bizarre easings that he was like, I don't see how you're going to continue to create content. You hate writing your blog. And I was like, okay, that's ouch, painfully true. I am a terrible blog writer, but I am fabulous at an easing. But it has to be the right e-zine. And here's the cool thing about this e-zine. I'm not responsible for the content. And that makes it easy. That makes it possible. And so the e-zine and the website are launching together and they're sort of sister projects. So I'm going to talk about them together because... In my shorthand for easing is the Cinnabar Moth Literary Collections website and electronic magazine that is on the internet. So the first part of it was figuring out where the content was going to come from, (laughs) to be honest, and also figuring out a budget because launching an easing and website is not cheap. We're very fortunate to have a website team in-house that does website maintenance and such, but they're not a website creation team. So we had to outsource that, which I ain't mad about. Um, Website creation, creating a website template is a very particular thing, and you have to know how you want that template to be able to grow. So we could make the template, but we could not make it grow. And I was like, you know what, y'all, let's just, let's outsource this because it's just eating up way too many hours and we have books to focus on and our own Cinnabar Moth uh, press website to focus on. And I didn't want that to get lost. And we also have a YouTube channel. So each one of these things has to be launched in a way that gives it its own time to shine but also creates momentum that builds. So we did the press and then we did the YouTube channel and then we did the podcast and now we're doing the e-scene and we're launching tomorrow and you met our lovely writer, our first writer in residence last week in the interview. Um, And we're so happy to have Ashala and we also have some of we also have a short story of hers in the winter anthology which is just amazing the black tree is just a stunning stunning story heartbreaking but absolutely beautiful i'm a huge fan of her writing both her fiction and non-fiction writing and we think that she's a rising star 
if I'm completely honest. And I feel so lucky to have landed her for our first uh, author in in residence for 2021. I know it's a short residency with it being two months. In the future, our residencies are going to be between three and four months. But for 2021, we wanted to have, I wanted to have the author and residence locked in for a year. I wanted it to be someone I knew and trusted. And I also wanted it to be the person who inspired doing the e-zine in the way that we're doing it. And that's Cynthia. So Cynthia came to us, I want to say about four months ago, after writing maybe six or seven months ago. I'm bad with time. Y'all know I'm bad with time. I don't even know what year it is. I don't even know what year the press launched on Twitter. They tease me a lot because I say we launched in October of 2021 when we launched launched in October of 2020. Um, so Cynthia came to us after, I can't remember when she wrote the short story for um, the anthology because it was shortly after that and I didn't research it before this episode, which if y'all listen to the Musics in Japan or other podcasts, you know we don't Google. Um, we be the royal we, me. Anyway, Cynthia came to us and she was like, I'm, I have a bunch of stories and I'm thinking about writing an anthology. And I was like, that's great, but we don't have any space for the anthology. And Cynthia was like, I really don't want to go with another press. I really want to go with, with y'all, so I'll wait. And I was like, I really don't want Cynthia to have to wait. Um, she's been so supportive of the press and I really want to make this happen for her. I really want to make this anthology happen for her in some kind of way. And I just couldn't figure out how to do it. And I was looking at the timing and trying to rearrange the schedule and looking at what books we had coming out. And then I was pursuing this other author for our November spot for a book release. And that deal fell, fell through. And I thought, you know what? This gives me a six month lead on launching a project that I know we want to launch that we were going to launch in 2022. Let's see if we can make it happen and get it out. And we did. So I, the first step was I reached out to Cynthia and I said, Hey, would you mind being our 2022 uh, author in residence and send us 12 short stories and which is more than we had asked for if it was going to be an anthology. So thank you so much for that, Cynthia. I really, really appreciate it. And so being an author in residence, it is an interview on the writer's triangle about diversity in writing to help educate the publishing world and readers and listeners of the cast about the lack of diversity that's in publishing and why diversity matters to them and from their perspective and where in the diversity matrix do they fit and talking about that experience and talking about writing diverse characters. In addition to that, they're featured on um, Cinnabar Moth Literary Collections website as the author in residence and the a bio and their their picture is on our landing page and then you can click away to a full read about all of their accomplishments as writers in and outside of the domain of writing it goes a little bit beyond that and their story becomes the story from which the themes are built and so Cynthia's stories and Vichelle's stories provide the backbone for each month's issue of the e-zine and they're, they're featured as the featured artist in the e-zine. It says author in residence and it has their story. And for us to get two such phenomenal writers with such clear visions and such distinct voices in their writing really was what made it possible was the first step in making it possible. 
for the November and December, I reached out because the November and December, uh, well, actually, the hollow launches on Halloween is horror. And then the December one is death. And I reached out to 10 different authors and d- divided them in half that we have a relationship with. They published in um, the anthology that we have coming up, reached out and asked them, hey, would you write a story, either a horror story or a death, depending on which issue, and be an invited author? And what that does is for the the two premier issues is that we know exactly what the quality is going to be. The authors are familiar with us. There's a comfort there and a feel familiarity there. And on, in addition to being in the first two issues, they get the title of invited guest author. And that's a little bit higher up the rung. If you, so you have a cold submission where there's a submission call and you just submit. And then you have invited writer, which is a step up from that where you're guaranteed to have your story published because you're being invited to produce something. And then you have writer in residence where multiple works are requested and you're the face and the representation of the, the easing. And we're really lucky that both of ours are such just phenomenal human beings and talented, talented authors. I'm just really glad that we were able to get them both i think they're both stars on the rise i think they're authors to watch and that's usually what an author in residence is and invited authors i think every author that we invited are authors to watch and i really am interested in in their trajectory and it's going to be so cool to be like if i don't know if you guys can hear but there's a thunderstorm today um so if you hear any rumbling, it's not my stomach. <laughs> it's the thunderstorm outside. So with these literary collections that we have for the easing, we have great quality of writing for the first two. We have great quality of writing for the January and February issues. We already have the works in and we've already announced the accepted authors. All of those are very exceptional authors. So an author, I want to circle back a little bit to an author in residence. An author in residence is a star on the rise or someone who has a bestseller. And for us, because we're an indie press, what we want to do is highlight indie authors that we feel are stars on the rise. And it may change over time as our authors become bestsellers, knock on wood, fingers crossed, hoping it happens. That would be so awesome. Or if an author that we know becomes a best-selling author, then of course we would want to extend an invitation to them because we love everyone who's supporting us, everyone who's been supporting us since our inception. We have a loyalty to those authors and those are the authors that we're looking at and rooting for and we're rooting for all authors. But you know your first group, right, that when you didn't really have anything to prove that you're as amazing as you think you're going to be, those people always hold a special place in my heart. And the easing allows us a place to put these short stories and give these short stories authors a home and another place to publish and a place that pays. We don't pay a lot. Um, We pay $75 a story. um, And... I know that's not a lot of money. It's not going to pay anyone's bills, but I think it might still get you a tank of gas in the U.S. I'm not sure. I know it'll get you a tank of gas in Japan. Um, More than a tank of gas in Japan. Uh, I think a couple of tanks of gas. I know if it's in the springtime, it'll definitely pay your electricity for several months in the spring. And maybe one month in the summer. I don't know what that digression was about. I'm just so excited and all over the place today. So that's the the easing part of it. And we're also super excited because we're selling advertising in the easing. And the advertising is already sold out for um, November and December. And we're super stoked about that to have 
advertising sellout. And I think it's, I think our advertising is sold out till February. If memory serves, I have to double check, um, my notes. I don't have them in front of me. So that's really exciting because it's another revenue source to keep the easing going and having it be self-sufficient so that it's at least breaking even and that we're able to pay authors. And of course, we'd like to increase the money that we're able to pay authors per story. And that's down to ad revenue. That's what's going to allow us to do that because a lot goes into the easing because we have to have someone who does, who just does the easing for us and puts it together. So their salary is factored into all of that. Okay. Along with the e-zine, we launched the Cinnabar Moth Literary Collections um, website. And the website really grew out of conversations with that we had with Outcast Press and the Outcast Press team. And being able to to kind of go back and forth and talk to someone and say, Hey, I think I'm doing, I'm thinking of doing this. I'm thinking of doing that. And they're super supportive. And they're like, that sounds awesome. That sounds great. And once I figured out all of the parts and pieces that I wanted, then it was time to build the website. So the, the parts and pieces that I wanted, I know that I wanted to have the flip book on the cover. I know that I wanted to have the author and residence on the cover. I know that I wanted ad space on the website. I know that I want to have um, the monthly, I think there's five different reviews that we're doing. We're doing authentically indie reviews. So I'm really humbled and honored by all of the indie authors who offered up their books when we did a call for books to review. Um, We're giving honest reviews, but we're not giving stars because I don't believe in the star system. I just believe because I just want to tell my experience with the book and I don't want stars attached to it because I feel that that's misleading and it might turn someone off. I'd rather have them read the review and then make a decision about reading the book. Plus, I want all of the reviews to be honest, but I want it to be something that the author gets a value added from and that the author will be happy to share. And I think stars kind of puts a lot of pressure on it. Even if you give four stars, it's like, why didn't I get that fifth star? So I don't want to deal with that. I just want to say, these are my impressions of the book. This was my lived experience with the book. This is what I like. This is what I think could improve. Just have it be that way. And then I have, did I like that bestseller? And it's me writing about bestsellers. And they do get star systems because they're already bestsellers. And my little one star or five star review of their book is not going to affect them or the author or anything. The reason that I started doing it is because so many of the books that are bestsellers, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Why are they a bestseller? I don't understand it. So some books I'm like, yeah, I love that book. But other books I'm like, what? But really, though, why? So I found that that would, I thought that would be an interesting thing to have on the website. But there's not room in the magazine for it. But there is room on the website. And that makes the website have something unique and different and value added beyond the e-zine. So we have Authentically Indie. I like that bestseller. And we also have Poetry. Because I am a huge poetry fan. I absolutely love, love, love poetry. So I reached out to, I actually didn't tell uh, Cassandra that I was going to review her book until after I bought it. And I read it and I loved it so much that I just have to review it. Uh, Tide Tables and Tea with God. Tea with God. That's the the first review that I did in the poetry. And then I did a collection of five poems. And then I did another collection of five poems. And so I have like the first four or five months of poetry reviews 
already out there and ready to publish. And then after that, we have guest reviews. And this is where the team at Outcast again, just really came through and swung for the fences and knocked out of the park for us, as well as our authors and other reviewers. We have the next four or five months of guest reviewers done. And I'll be honest, the guest reviews are reviews of Cinnabar Moth publishing books. And they're honest reviews of just what do you think of this book? And it's a way to have our book reviewed, but also give an outside perspective outside of the press and just make it fully rounded. And it it's always going to be one of our books, I think. We might switch it up and have them review some other books as well. We'll have to see as it develops. And then there's also going to be on the sidebar, all of the authors who contributed to the e-zine that month and their socials and their authors page to promote the authors so that you can know where to find them and their other works because we think the authors are absolutely amazing and deserve your time and attention. And we really wanted that to be on the website and have them featured. Of course, there's also information on how to submit to the e-zine. And there's also information on how to apply to be a guest reviewer on the website. And anyone who reviews a book that comes from our press, you receive a coupon. So you get the book for free, but we don't pay for reviews. If you have a review website, we do give you the cross promotion and the link. We will link to your blog or website. And if you're an author and you have an author's website, we will link to your author's website so that you get that good cross promotion. In addition to that, we have um, a way to subscribe to the website so that you get notifications when new things um, hit the website because each of the reviews go up once a week. And so for the launch, we had all four reviews up and then we'll be adding to them weekly in their normal schedule, which required us to have an extra month of reviews in the bag before we launched. So that was something that we had to take into consideration is that we needed two reviews done for every category of reviews so that we could launch with the website fully realized and everything filled out so that everyone got the full experience from the date of launch, which will be tomorrow. So everything is filled out. In addition to that, we have a spot on the website for books and that's each month we have a book coming out and we will put the book in that spot where you can click on it and you can read the blurb and have order links and such. And then the month of January, we don't publish books. We'll be putting a guest book um, when we run out of our own books to put on. I think because we're starting with already having uh, four books published that it'll be quite some time before we get to the place where we're having guest books. But when we run out of our books to do, we'll have that spot open for guest books. In addition to uh, guest books on the site, we also have, we've also launched our catalog. We put our catalog together, which I'm super excited about. And so you can link and click our catalog and we have a space to subscribe. And you can also find our catalog and subscribe to our catalog so you get notification of when new books come out um, over on Cinnabar Moth Pub. And then, of course, you can subscribe to just the e-zine if you don't want to subscribe to the website so that all you're getting is the e-zine and you don't have to visit the website to get it. And the e-zine is free. All of this stuff is free to read. There's nothing behind um, any paywalls. And we thought that was important to improve accessibility and also to improve readership, just keeping it real 100. We absolutely love, love, love all of the horror collection. And we think it is 
absolutely perfect for a Halloween launch. And all of the authors, all of our guest authors that were invited just really knocked it out of the park. And we're so happy and so excited with the quality of, of work that they turned in. And we feel like all of the stories really flow together. So to put the easing together from start to finish took about seven to eight months. And I'm finding that that's my lead time for just about everything to get anything done, to launch a book, to launch the podcast, to launch the easing, to launch the website. It takes me about eight to uh, eight months is really comfortable. Um, I can do it in six, but that's a little bit challenging for me and the way my mind works because I like to do everything far enough in advance that life can happen and we'll still be able to put out the product. So I had to have all of the stories before I felt comfortable announcing, which is why it's surprise because everyone had until September to get their stories to us. And then of course we had to get them edited and formatted and that really gave us, and then put into the flip book with the art and all of that, not a lot of lead time, but I felt comfortable with, having that short amount of lead time in terms of the stories a lot most of the authors got the stories to us well in advance which was really exciting and really helpful thank you all so much i'm not listing all of the authors because i'm trying to encourage you to go visit the website when it comes live tomorrow to read all of the authors and to read the e-zine and we're just super super grateful to everyone who contributed and to the Cinnabar Moth team behind the scenes who really in the beginning, because we were doing podcast and easing simultaneously, there was a lot of overtime work. So I really want to thank everybody on the team who put in those long hours and dealt with my mood swings. I'll admit that there were some days that I was a little bit more pointed than I wanted to be, which I'm not proud of. So I'm publicly apologizing for those pointed moments. I just really, really believe in all of this. And I'm just really, really passionate about all of this. And I know people who act like a Dracosaurus often say, it was my passion. So that's why I'm apologizing. Because I feel like there were some, some jerky moments, not with authors. I'm never jerky with authors, but with the the team i felt like i sometimes i can be a little short with the team and and for that i apologize but i'm super excited and i'm super happy and for the most part it's been a really positive experience and i think the reason that it was such a positive experience is down to the authors and the fact that every author that we sent an invitation to came back with a yes that was so gratifying so our author for author in residence came back with a yes um all of the people we reached out to for reviews came back with a yes this is a team effort when it comes to the content and i absolutely couldn't do it without everyone's collaboration and feedback and a special thank you to everyone at outcast press who just listened to me drone on and on about all of my ideas um, <laughs> my order of ideas sort of happen is I have an idea. I tell my husband, then if my husband can be convinced that it's a good idea, which sometimes is a struggle and the struggle is real. Um, once I get it past my hardest critic, a lot of people say that they're their harshest critic, but I think when it comes to ideas, my husband is my harshest critic, which is good because Chad makes sure that I dot my I's and cross my T's and that everything is professional and ready to go and at a standard that I'll be proud to have my name associated with. If you want to check out who the easing team is, unlike Cinnabar Moth, that team stays anonymous, but the easy team, they were like, yes, please put me on the team page. And I think because it was 
just so much work and they're like i would like some credit for this this is above and beyond and a lot of them are also cinnabar moth team members so there's a little bit of lots of anonymity for that but it just says their name and position because not everyone wanted a picture of themselves and i wanted um there to be symmetry in all of the listings so if one doesn't want their picture no one gets their picture kind of thing and it does say their their first and last name and it does say their position for those of you that are that are curious who our team is but that was not enough information to find any of them so we did do our deal, due diligence on that i want to thank all of our beautiful cinnabar moths or any kind of moth you want to be or even if you're a butterfly but i'm not mariah carey so i'm not trying to steal her rhyme for tuning in this week and i'm so excited for all of you to check out the easing when it when it lands tomorrow and check out the website um the cinnabar moth it's not the it's cinnabar moth literary collection and i deliberately left off the the because whole grammar thing that i went through with with chad my beautiful husband <laughs> so thank you so much for your time and attention and i'll talk to you in two weeks bye